Okay, we took a bit of an aside and talked about the orientation of the airplane. Before we talked about that, we were deriving the boundary conditions for the tangential electric fields so that we could figure out the transmission and reflection coefficients at the interface between the aluminum body of the airplane and the free space. We already determined the boundary conditions for the tangential electric fields, and so now we can determine the boundary conditions for the tangential magnetic fields using the same approach as before, except now we're going to apply Ampere's law at the interface. We can use the same shape for the surface S, a rectangular surface. When we collapse the surface S by taking delta N to zero along the material interface, on the left side of Ampere's law, we get H tan two times delta L minus H tan one delta L. This is analogous to what we had before with the electric field. And on the right side of the equation, the flux that uh, cuts through the surface S also goes to zero as before. So this is the flux going through the surface and as uh, S goes to zero, then this term will be equal to zero. But next consider the J term. J relates to how much charge electrons are flowing through the surface S. Well, how many flowing electrons there are through S depends on how good of a conductor the material is. If the conductivity is infinite, so if the conductivity is infinite, then all the charge is right along the surface. But for a finite conductivity, as we have for aluminum, the charge extends for some depth into the conductor and is not concentrated right at the surface. So unless the material is a perfect electric conductor with an infinite conductivity, then in the limit as we collapse S around the interface between the two materials, then we're going to get this term also equals zero, except, I'll say if sigma is infinity, and we have, even if we collapse, collapse S right around the surface, we'll see those electrons right at the surface. So as a result, we end up with an analogous relationship as we had for the tangential electric field. We get H tan one is equal to H tan two. And I'll say as long as neither material is a PEC, perfect electric conductor with sigma equal to infinity. Now we can figure out how much of the wave is reflected or transmitted across the material interface by applying the boundary conditions we just arrived for the tangential com components. Since the tangential electric and magnetic fields are continuous across the boundary, then the total tangential electric field on the left side in air must be equal to the total tangential electric field on the right side of the interface. And since our electric field is only tangential, there's no normal component, we can write E vector phasor I at Z equals zero. On this side we have the incident electric field and the reflected electric field. So I'm going to put vector phasor R z equals zero, and I'm going to say that that is going to be equal to, on the right side, right across the boundary, we're going to have the transmitted electric field that's going to be equal to at z equals zero. And we can write the same thing for the magnetic field, and we can write the magnetic field in terms of the electric field as E vector phasor I over eta one plus E vector phasor R over eta one. And on the other side, that's going to be equal to E vector phasor transmitted over eta two. And of course, all of these are at Z equals zero. If we solve these two equations simultaneously, we'll get, we'll be able to solve for the reflection and transmission coefficients. The process for this is the same as for when we obtained the reflection coefficient for a load at the end of a transmission line, so I'm not going to go through the details of it here. So when we solve these two equations simultaneously, this is what we wind up with. This is the reflection coefficient, and we should specify is for 
the electric field, remember we had a different reflection coefficient for the voltage versus the current for transmission lines, so we're going to have the same thing here. Voltage reflection coefficient for the electric field versus the magnetic field. And here is our transmission coefficient. So now we can finally calculate the reflection and the transmission coefficients for aluminum. Go ahead and try doing that.